In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. On the second day, God created the atmosphere, or the sky, which separated the waters above from the waters below. The water above the firmament would have acted like an ozone layer and protected the earth from ionizing radiation. Air pressure and oxygen concentrations would have been higher. Back in the days of Adam, the earth's magnetic field would have been much stronger. The result of this was that everything grew bigger and lived for longer. Giant skeletons have been found in the mountains of Ararat and many people think that Noah was probably a giant. This could explain why only four families were able to build such a big boat. God made man in his image and placed him in the Garden of Eden along with all the other animals that he had made on the sixth day, including the dinosaurs. After the fall of man, man had to leave the Garden of Eden. He began to multiply and fill the earth, but man became wicked and God decided to rid the earth of mankind. God chose Noah, a relatively righteous man. He told Noah that he was about to flood the earth and destroy all mankind. He helped Noah build an ark which was made from cypress wood and covered with pitch. He told Noah to bring into the ark two of every kind of living creature and sufficient food to last one year. When everything had been completed, God caused the earth to crack open. Genesis 7.11 says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heavens were opened. Rain fell on the earth for forty days and forty nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, and every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, and everything with wings, pairs of all creatures that have breath of life came to Noah and entered the ark. The Bible says that the waters flooded the earth for 150 days. In Genesis 8 it says God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep, and the floodgates of, the, of heaven, had been closed, and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. Water receded steadily from the earth, and at the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the seventeenth day 
of the seventh month the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month and on the first day of the tenth month the tops of the mountains became visible. By the first day of the first month of Noah's six hundred and first year the waters had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day of the second month the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so that they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. When Noah came out of the ark he built an altar and he and his sons worship God. God blessed Noah and his sons saying to them be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. The fear and the dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, now I give you everything. God told men not to kill each other. God made a covenant with Noah and the animals in the ark, promising never to destroy the earth again with such a flood. He set his rainbow in the sky as a sign of the covenant between God and the earth.